she, she was lying in this dying swan pose and this hand was not burnt, it was the same colour. Her flesh was normal and her nail varnish was on this hand. But when I looked into her face, she had a whole hole in her face. There was no face and there were no teeth. This is the devastated mother of a young woman who was found brutally murdered and mutilated at a sugarcane plantation. Her killer was this man, Filani Natuli. He reportedly kidnapped her from her workplace, held her captive for two days, before eventually killing her and setting her body on fire. But what would make him do such an awful thing? Let's look into the devastating case of Siam Lee, the young sweet woman who was found mutilated in a sugarcane field. Siam Lee was born in Hong Kong in 1997 to her mom, Carmen Nans Lee, who worked as an escort, and her dad, Howard Greenspan, who was a wealthy South African businessman. Adorable, she was so sweet. Um, yeah, Hong Kong was just wonderful. I, mean, I always wanted to go back. She wanted to go back, but it was never to be. Sadly, Siam's dad was murdered when she was still very young, and she moved to Durban. South Africa with her mother. Before her dad died, he had set up a trust fund for her to ensure that she was well taken care of. She attended Crawford College, one of the most prestigious schools in the country, and had dreams of becoming a teacher and traveling the world. But unfortunately, when she turned 18, the trust fund payments stopped, leading her into a completely different path that would ultimately destroy her. Siam started working as a waitress, bartender, and salesperson, trying to fend for herself. But in 2017, she was introduced into the business of sensual massage. Her mother, Carmen, who was already in that line of work, said that they worked together as a team as she could not allow Siam to be alone in that business because she was still very naive. They called themselves an instructor and student in training. In the adult website, Red Velvet, Siam advertised her services as sensual masseuse under the alias student in training. But according to her mother, Siam didn't offer any other services beyond that. It's very important people understand that Siam was never ever a prostitute and she was never ever going to become one. You know, this was a means to an end until trust fund would be reinstated or she had saved enough to study and go teach or whatever. Still, this line of work made her vulnerable to predators who would become completely obsessed with her to the point that one of them would end up taking her life. On January 4th, 2018, at around 4 p.m., Siam was working at the massage parlor when a black Mercedes-Benz Viano pulled up the driveway. A man carrying an unlicensed firearm jumped out of the vehicle and stormed into the room where Siam was working and forced her into the car before driving off. That was the last time Siam would be seen alive again. According to investigators, the man took Siam and drove at high speed, even losing control at one time, hitting another vehicle on the road. The owner of the vehicle angrily chased after the Mercedes-Benz and smashed into the back, but the Mercedes sped off. An investigation into Siam's kidnapping was immediately launched, with Siam's dad's family even hiring a private investigator, Brad Nathanson, to help in the case. Several searches were conducted in the area, with the police releasing sketches of the man they believed could have taken Siam. Meanwhile, Siam's devastated mother went on Facebook to appeal for information that would bring her daughter home safely. Um, to bring her home, bring her home, bring her out, baby, my little girl. Um, if for some reason that she is not been harbored or kidnapped. I know she would be home. Two days after Siam's kidnapping, a farmer in a small town called New Hanover was taking his grandson fishing when they came across a horrifying discovery. The farmer said that he and his grandson were passing through a secluded road near a sugarcane plantation when he saw a patch of charred canes. When he went closer to investigate, he was shocked to find the charred remains of a young woman. The woman was in handcuffs and had a blanket covering her head, which appeared to be badly mutilated. They dragged her in here, face down, feet that side. 
A post-mortem later determined the cause of death to be hemorrhage from multiple head injuries, as well as 90% burns with charring of tissues. The body was identified as Siam. She was so badly burnt that her mother had to use the piercing on her lip and nail polish on her hand and toes to identify her. And the most sickest, incomprehensible act of it probably done on her for two days. And she was the most gentlest, sweetest, kindest, timid, beautiful girl. When I have to just, I'll never be able to get my peace about that. Never, never. But why would anyone do something so horrible to her? The news about Siam's horrific death spread like wildfire, with people going to social media to express their sadness and outrage. They called for justice and demanded that the police find the monster behind the brutal slaying. Meanwhile, private investigators, Brad Nathanson, was also determined to find the killer. He worked alongside the police, following every lead and urging the public to provide any information that would help in the case. The first breakthrough on the case came sooner than expected when the owner of the vehicle that had been hit by a speeding Mercedes Viano came forward. The accident happened two minutes after Siam was allegedly abducted and within 200 meters of the actual place where she was abducted. That, that was indeed the tipping point because what that got us to do was to check with the various insurance companies to see if a claim had been put in. We established that a claim had been put in. The vehicle was traced to a house in an area called Sean Gwenny, owned by a successful 29-year-old businessman by the name of Filani Natuli. And as a private investigator, Brad would later say, the guy just didn't look like someone you'd expect to commit such a heinous crime. I'll, I'll never forget taking that man down and handcuffing him and looking at his attire and smelling how, well, how good he smelled, expensive aftershave and noting that he had a Mont Blanc pen in his pocket. And I thought to myself for a fleeting moment that I made a mistake, that I arrested the wrong guy. This guy was just too plausible. He was just, he was just too well spoken. He was too well polished. He was too well finished. It was just, it was impossible. But apparently this was all a facade meant to conceal the evil inside of him. Two years before Siam's murder, a woman named Jessica Weyers had reported that a guy matching Filani's description had kidnapped her, held her in his house for days, and violated her. Just like Siam, Jessica was also in the sensual massage business and was able to pick out Filani from a lineup. And there's more. Filani's ex-fiance, Lucky Mithembu, who was a former beauty queen, had apparently gone to the police several times to report his violent behavior towards her. Their relationship ended in 2016 after he allegedly brutally assaulted her and she was admitted to the hospital with a broken ankle. But. Even after they broke up, he continued to stalk her and threaten her family. During that time, Lucky's mother's car was set on fire, and then her mother was later murdered. While there was no evidence connecting Filani to the whole thing, Lucky suspected that he was involved. She managed to get a restraining order against him, probably even saving her life in the process. During a search of his house, police found that every drawer in the house, including the kitchen, contained products that simulated and enhanced intimate relations. But strangely, there was nothing that would protect him from getting infected with a disease. It was later revealed that Filani was HIV positive and had been going around trying to infect as many women as possible. He would reportedly lure them in with job interviews and then force them into sleeping with him. In addition to this, Filani was also a con artist who had convinced a lot of people into investing in companies that didn't exist. Investigators learned that he had multiple companies registered under his name, but only two of them were operational. After his arrest, Filani reportedly confessed to all the crimes, even giving chilling details of how the murders took place. Filani claimed that he met Siam a few months earlier and that she borrowed some money from him, promising to pay him back, but didn't. On the day of the abduction, he said that he had lost patience with Siam and went to her job with handcuffs and a gun to demand his money. But Siam reportedly told him that she didn't have any money and wouldn't be able to pay. This got him furious and he decided to kidnap her in the hopes that her family would pay for her ransom. He held her at his house for two days, violating her and doing all manner of sick stuff to her. 
Then in the early morning of January 6th, he decided to kill her after she apparently threatened to go to the police. He said that he tried choking her to death, but that didn't work. So he went and got a hammer. After placing a blanket over her head, he hit her repeatedly with it. But get this. He would tell detectives that he did that because, apparently, Siam was having spasms and he felt sorry for her. How crazy is that? But he didn't stop there. He then went to a nearby gas station to buy six gallons of gasoline, which he would later douse on her body and set on fire. Filani was charged with multiple counts, including murder, rape, fraud, and abduction. His trial was set to begin in July 2019, and investigators at that time believed they had him. Accused is facing a, about it's more than eight charges, ranging from kidnapping, murder, defeating the ends of justice, possession of unlicensed firearms, and failing to report an accident, and more. I'm 90% sure that he'll get a conviction and a sentence and, uh, and pay for what he has done to the woman. But there would be an unexpected development. A month before Filani was set to stand trial, reports came that he had died of skin cancer. He was out on bail at that time and had appeared frail and haggard during his pre-trial hearing in May 2019 and was even walking in crutches. Still, the news of his death felt way too convenient and people speculated that he was probably faking his death to get out of going to prison. An investigation was launched to confirm if Filani was really dead with a court official even going to inspect his body and take fingerprints to compare with the ones at the police station. And everything confirmed that indeed, Filani Nutuli was dead. The prosecution would later say in a statement that in some weird way, Filani had managed to escape justice, a sentiment also shared by Siam's family. But this case would just get even weirder. You remember the Jessica Weirers, the woman that had reported being kidnapped and violated by Filani? Well, on November 2nd, 2020, her body was found at a sports field with her throat slit and both hands cut off. She was 23 years old and she was last seen leaving her apartment on November 1st at about 5.30 p.m. She told her family she was going to visit a friend, but she never came home. Now, it's still not clear whether her murder and Siam's are related because her case has never been solved to this day. She loved me so much. I mean, I wasn't a perfect mother so many ways I wasn't a perfect mother. She always forgave me. I miss her so much. What do you think about this case? Could Siam and Jessica's murders be connected? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, and if you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more.